The Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. It's a pleasure to have you with you. Have, uh, shit. It's a pleasure to have you with you. It's, a it's also a pleasure to have you with us yes. as well. As we speak, the boss, Leon, is in the studio with us reading Guy's nude Metro article. And what an article it is. Leon, did you enjoy it? I'm actually only about halfway through it. Have the you guy's got, a bit of a dick. Have but you, anyway, the guy that wrote it. Ha, oh, the guy that wrote it. I can't it, believe I gave him so much time. I thought what, you meant guy's why, a bit of a dick. You, no, no, all guy is a, a bit of a dick, but he's a nice guy. So why I can let why him do you think he's a dick? No, he's just a couple of things in here, but that's all right. Everyone's got their own opinion. He, did, he, he said the Edge has um, terrible music. Tell, tell that to someone who cares. <laughs> Which we is, don't. No, which I'm just is a, we do care. We no, really do fine. care. That's a personal. That's it's a, a personal choice. It's a matter of opinion. Thing. Personally, yeah. I'm a um, I'm a big fan of uh, pop music. It just depends what sort of music you're into. Well, I hardly think that that if he writes for Metro magazine, he's going to be getting down to the edge. <laughs> um, have you got to the paragraph where um, you're mentioned, Leon, and Guy I talks have. about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How I do have. you feel about what he said about you? Oh no, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't read it, so I don't know. Did you, did you th- launch any bombs in this article, guy? There's there's no real bombs. Sharon gets mentioned quite a lot. Leon's involved. He gets interviewed. Um, Clint, you're not really mentioned. No, mate. he got a mention. He, he got, got mentioned. Got a mention there when he made a dig about how crappy and upbeat Clint and I were. <laughs> oh yeah, I got I got the other host, Clint. Did senior producer Chang make the cut of the article? Chang did not no. make the cut, unfortunately. Chang got cut. Chang got cut. Yeah. Shame on your face, Chang. At least I got my name in there. Oh, well. Hey. If you want to have a perv, go have a perv. I just, <laughs> as always with magazines, just look at the pictures because Co- you'll get to see a lot more than you paid for. Coming up in the podcast today, DJ Severe joins us for a new segment called Severe Overreactions. Guy visits the internet party and we reveal who the Edge Office butt toucher is. It's not you, it's someone else. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. What have you scored from a dumpster? We've been clearing office at the um, edge and I have got some amazing things. What have you, what amazing things have you got? Uh, A copy of Guinness Book of Records 2012. (laughs) Wow. A copy of Now That's What I Call Music, Volume 4. Oh, that's retro. Which you're claiming is yours, but I'm claiming is Finders, Keepers, Losers, Weepers. It does have my childhood handwriting thing, (laughs) Sharon Wakefield, across it. Great tracks on that. Venga Boys, I believe, is on there. Hell yeah. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. Let's get the party started. Started um, and uh, most importantly, uh, the cape that I am wearing now. It is a beautiful cape. It brings you, out your eyes. You kind of look like a uh, um, half-assed vampire, <laughs> <laughs> like a guy who's come to the costume party. The dude who shows up but puts in no effort besides yeah. one item, or the world's lamest superhero, <laughs> <laughs> whose whose powers of calculation will destroy any tax enemy out there. Or one of those kids whose parents let them wear capes in public. <laughs> Pretty cute. What else did you find? Is that it? No, coming from the text machine, there's some amazing stuff that people are texting in. Um, someone found mint condition set of Led Zeppelin's albums. Awesome. That's pretty good. And vinyl. That would be good. valuable. And My upper hut, though. Yeah. Chang is um, from this, from this big clean out that's happening at the edge. The edge is a war zone at the moment. It's like the whole place has been... T- turned upside down and shaken. To be honest, saying that is quite offensive to people actually in war zones, but I don't think they're listening to The Edge, so we're sweet as. They may have the app. <laughs> Chang from this um, renovation is actually furnishing his whole house. Yes, I scored big time, actually. I, yesterday I just took a, uh, a red chair home, which yeah. I'm really happy about. A red chair? I think it costs like a couple of hundred dollars, that little chair. It's worth more because it's red. <laughs> So I'm pretty happy with that. It was probably worth a couple of hundred dollars when it was new. It's an old chair Oh, no, it's nothing wrong with that. A little wipe and it's all good. A little wipe, eh? (laughs) So we're asking... You have no idea what people have done to that chair We're asking what you have found in the trash. Darren, what did you score in a dumpster dive? Um, I scored like an old uh, sort of video game called Astro Wars. Whoa! Which came out in about the early 80s and uh, worked perfectly fine. (laughs) <laughs> Wicked. Would that be worth some coin now? Um, I think it might be. Um, I did see, like, uh, if you go through the uh, Te Papa and you look at the toys from different ages, in the 80s I've got one in Te Papa. Dar- Darren, it might work perfectly, but do you play it? Um, not so much now. I did when I first got it. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, do you know what I'd be doing if I was you? Heading up Antique Roadshow and getting some money, honey. Someone <laughs> <laughs> texted in to say, we're not in America, it's not cold dumpsters. What do we call it in New Zealand? Rubbish tin. 
a rubbish bin. Rubbish um, bin. I always have the rubbish tins growing up, but rubbish. No, but bin. like the big, the big, like the big ones that you Mini chuck everything. A skip. A skip bin. Skip diving. It doesn't sound as good. It nah. sounds like you're skipping and you're diving at the same time. Anyway, what did you find in the bin? Um, some people have been texting, and I scored a pair of tickets to the All Blacks versus Australia at Eden Park. Whoa. Whoa. Who put those in the bin? <laughs> Must have been an it's one of those things you can throw out, you'd be gutted, eh? Yeah, I guess. Um, scored a brand new cat tree worth five hundred bucks in upmarket Auckland suburb. How good is the idea of a cat tree, eh? A cat tree. Yeah, worth five hundred bucks. I reckon a tree that could grow some cats would be worth more than that. That sounds <laughs> unbelievable. Do we actually know what a cat tree is? I, I actually have no idea. I was going to go with a cat sprouting that's tree. Where, that's where cats come from. Apparently, they're worth about five hundred bucks. My brother found a whole lot of books in a dumpster, brought them home, turned out to be the textbooks for every subject I'm taking this semester. Amazing. That is. That's. T- that, that sounds like your brother stole some books. And then brought them home as a present and goes, hey, I got all your books. Found them in a dumpster. Like a literary, like a literary Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you find when you went dumpster diving? Uh, a pool table. Really? What? And was it completely in great, great nick? It wasn't all ripped up or anything? No, no, it was in good nick. The balls uh, don't the like... The thing I had to get was uh, pool balls and the cues. So the balls don't, like, slightly run off to one side or anything, do they? No, no. As soon as I um, leveled it up, it went perfectly. Sweet. Oh, that's a, that is a good find. Beef Mints, that's your fake name today. Beef Mints, what did you find in the dumpster? Um, KFC. What? What? Ha- hang on, Beef Mints. So what you're saying <laughs> is that you found old KFC and then had a munch on some old chicken. It's, it's not so bad. Our, our friend used to work there and our other friend had a flat directly next door. Yeah. And at the end of the night, they would triple bag all of the food individually, so all the buns and all the potato and gravy separately, yeah. and they would throw them in the dumpster behind KFC. So yeah. she would volunteer to take them out to the dumpster a bit, and she instead she'd stash them behind her car and then bring them over to us. Oh, phew. I thought you were going to say you guys are jumping in there like, oh, I'm finger licking good, guys, and so, just so eating it not, out of there. Not so bad, no. Every <laughs> night you ate KFC out of a dumpster. That, is, that takes the cake, to be honest. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations. Beef, mix. Yeah, beef you mints. Have, you've I, clocked life. I cannot figure out for the life of me why you didn't want your real name used. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story to be proud of. Next. We'll... People know the story, so they'll, some of them will know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> and who, Everyone knows the story. It's legendary. And who do you guys think you are? Beef Mint is her real name. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Sharon's got some huge news, guys. I sh- well, is it huge? It's pretty huge. It's pretty exciting news. Sharon, share it with everyone what your exciting huge news is. I downloaded our podcast like I do every day. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold up. It gets better. Today I actually listened to the whole thing. <laughs> Yo, 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 there it is. Usually when I download... Yo, girl, you got it, you got... Sorry, too much? Usually when I download the podcast, I listen to about 10 minutes and then I get really annoyed because I'm like, God damn it, shut up and play a song already. (laughs) I get really annoyed. But today I went for a run and I was like, come on, give this show a chance, Sharon. Listen to the whole thing. Up until now, you haven't been a great advocate for our podcast, (laughs) have you? No, but I... I did. I really enjoyed it. Apart from when I was running, I must have got a sweaty thumb or something, and I I didn't lock this. I don't know how I did it, but I accidentally skipped podcasts, and I somehow started listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Joe, and I was like, "Hang on!" I was like, Joe, I, I stopped running, and I like looked down. I was like, "Joe Rogan." From freaking Survivor, get out of my phone, and it like went back. <laughs> Joe Rogan's from Fear Factor. Oh, I thought it was from Survivor. <laughs> One of those shows, anyway. Same old, same old. They're both shit. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan is weirdly now the um, the spokesperson for um, what's that U- for the UFC. UFC? So yeah, you would have been listening to a UFC. He's podcast. actually I loved. Know. So I, any I, Joe I, Rogan fans out there, holla! He's actually quite a good stand up comedian. As soon as I heard his voice, I had to get out. I was is like, there anything get out Joe of here. Rogan can't do? <laughs> He's unstoppable. I tell you what, he can't do. Make me listen to his podcast longer than thirty <laughs> seconds. So we back to our podcast. Quite enjoyed it. So so if you haven't given it a go because you think that we're a little bit annoying or whatever, give it a nudge. May help you fall asleep. <laughs> Sharon's Maybe. finally been converted. Maybe it can be you next. Maybe it will get you amped up for a boxing match. I don't know, but you'll you might enjoy it. <laughs> 
high praise from Sharon for the podcast. So it, thank, thank it's you been a, it's been an uneasy uh, journey for Sharon in podcasting. It started um, five months ago when she started doing a podcast. <laughs> then a full three months later, she realised no, we had a podcast. I, I, and then a month after that, she figured out how to download the podcast. <laughs> and then today, five months after starting podcasting, Sharon has listened to one of her own podcasts. Well, I just really like the songs we play. Chang makes one for this show every night, and it's it, I mean, I mean, it's our podcast. So we would say this, but it's pretty good. Um, I enjoy it. You can download it from 7 o'clock each night on I'm iTunes, biased, and you can listen to it at theedge.co.nz. I enjoyed it today. <laughs> okay, listen to another one. I'll try again in another five months, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the studio the wonderful, the amazing DJ Savi. Hoop that is. Why? Thank you. Welcome, yes. welcome to the Guy Sharon and Clint show. This is the first time we've had you on the show. Yes, it is. I've been avoiding this uh, this happening, but I've uh, been roped in. What's going? <laughs> what's going on? Hey, we want to talk to you because you're in a very bad mood today. We've heard some rumours. Oh. We've heard some things. Okay, what's that? Did what? you watch the game last night? <laughs> <sighs> yep. Because it's, it's well documented that you're the biggest Queensland fan ever. You've been wearing your Queensland jersey all week. Or to- your life, more like it. <laughs> <laughs> I was born with a Queensland jersey on. So oh, what happened last so night? What, what, where, did it, where did it all go wrong for the Queensland boys? Um, where did it all, we just didn't play well. That's the bottom line. Well, it just did, it? We, we just didn't play well. And Cooper Cronk getting injured was terrible. And Jonathan Thurston... Playing like a complete douchebag so, didn't help. So this was a bad time for you, right? The the loss you took it quite. You, did, you didn't take it well, did you? No. Oh, state of origin got emotional for yeah. you. <laughs> I heard that uh, your as a result of the game, your iPhone might have got mixed, cut up, and destroyed by DJ Severe. <laughs> Ching, eh? <laughs> the rumor yeah. ground going around the offices is that you smashed your phone in anger. I did smash my phone in anger. Unbelievable. What? So please, let's forget about sports chat. Yeah. Talk us through, <laughs> excuse the phrase. I got angry. Talk us through got... the psycho part of your evening. I got angry. And so you just rose from the couch. You're like, God damn it! Whatever team you were supporting, different words, your not phone. those words. <laughs> different <laughs> words. This is the PG version. Yeah, yeah, different yeah. words, and I just lost it. Did you get it? Wow. Did you get a nasty tweet from a New South Wales supporter or something? I got about a th- actually. Were you? In, were you? Playing? I was. I was putting the boot in, man. I was bloody enjoying it. It was great times. <laughs> not a fan of this guy. Um, <laughs> it was actually several people that were annoying me constantly throughout the night. And I thought that we were going to come through at the end because it looked like it was going to happen, and it didn't. And in that last few moments, um, I, I threw my phone at the at the uh, wall, and it wow. hit on the way to the wall, hit the table, <laughs> and hit the lamp, and it hit the wall, <laughs> and then hit the ground, and it it shattered. Have you got it here? Um, it's in the shop getting fixed as we speak. <laughs> let, let's all let's all just point out, like your team lost, but man. DJ Severe must be rolling in it if he could have smashed his phone. Like, I would have got up and smashed a cup or something. Can't afford to smash the old what, phone. What's the phone? It's an iPhone 5. Whoa. Dang! Whoa. Oh, Rich guy! I'm going to get smashed when my wife gets home from Australia. Oh, so I bet. We thought we could talk this afternoon on the back of this that we could talk about, um, and don't excuse the pun because I think it's fantastic, severe overreaction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I sound like a dick right now. When have you well, severely overreacted to something and maybe you broke something, maybe you um, threw a tantrum, something happened and in hindsight it was a severe overreaction. <laughs> oh. Very nice. Um, someone texted in saying, uh, my mum told me I couldn't go to the One Direction concert, so I broke my thumb in anger. Ooh. Now, knowing a One Direction fan, it wasn't like they punched the wall and broke their thumb as well. It'd be like they grabbed their thumb and ripped it off because they were so fired up about One Direction. That's not it. That's not. It sounds ridiculous. That's not a ridiculous call actually at all. Last night there was a hashtag trending. Should I even say this? Probably uh, not. No. But say it now. Say it now. Ha- after that weed stuff going around, you say there was a hashtag trending called. Cut for Zane. Oh, Jesus God Christ. It's, it's actually mental illness. If you are thinking of uh, cutting yourself for a member of One Direction, <laughs> seek medical help because you need it. Yes, I shouldn't laugh, but yes. Someone else texts in, these always backfire badly. Eh? My car wouldn't start, so I booted a big dent in my dr- driver's door. Dot, dot, dot. Turns out the car battery was just flat. <laughs> Sam, tell us about your severe overreaction. Um, uh, me and my partner were having a fight, and I managed to break my phone and my hand. What? I, I punched the wall and broke my hand and oh, broke my phone. Superb. Did you have the phone in your hand when you punched it? 
I separately threw my phone at the wall. Oh, God. Well, don't have anything in your hands when you fight <laughs> any time now, okay? No, yeah, yeah, I won't. <laughs> and I decided not to punch any more walls. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's, that, that's, that's the better option Sorry, here. that's the better yeah. option as well. <laughs> Sam, let's learn, bad. let's learn to use our words and count to ten. <laughs> I have, I have. Good, thank you. Good to hear. Oh, 800 The Edge, Linda, what was your severe overreaction? Um, we were just doing the dishes one night, my partner and I at the time, and, um, you know, when you get whipped with the tea towel? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I was just washing steak knife, and he just sort of whipped me, and out of complete reaction, I just threw the steak knife, oh. and... Um, it landed between his toes and stuck in the floorboard. I don't quite know how I missed, but it was so you, severe. you didn't get any of his webbing on his feet or anything? No, it was like between his big toe and his other toe, and it just, just went straight down, and I was just like, um, oh, my God, and... He just stared and, you know, we're married now. So. You know what? He'll- <laughs> we're married now. We're married now. Yeah. Good punchline. I, I have to yeah. ask, how many times has he flicked a tea towel at you since? Oh, yeah. Quite a lot. Oh, Never well. Steak around there. Get a bigger knife. You'll stop doing it, mate. There's one more call that's just come through that you have to take. Angela, tell us your story. Okay, so I um, got a frozen Coke from McDonald's, and it was too cold to drink, so I left it on the bench, and I had to go out, and I left my two teenagers at home. And when I came home, someone had drank it, oh. and the... They wouldn't say who it was, so I took them both down to the police station. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying you were having them charged with? Theft. Well, yeah, because I was like, they're, they're either liars or they're thieves. And, like, I should be able to leave my frozen Coke there till it melts, and it should be fine, but no, they stole it, and no one would admit that to is- it. That is a severe overreaction. That, that is Angela. very, very severe. What I'm just saying on the kids' side here. What did the police say when you took them down there? I think they thought that I might be slightly nuts. <laughs> I, think, I think none of your kids op- owned up to it because they didn't do it. Frozen Coke, if you leave it and go out, just melts and becomes regular Coke. So yeah, I think... And then you can drink it and you don't get brain freeze. <laughs> just buy normal Coke. That there is our feature inspired by DJ Severe called Severe Overreactions. This is a DJ Severe song, I didn't know what it was going to be. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. The edge. Guy, Sharon and Clint. That's Tiesto. It's Wasted. Woo, good dancing to that song, Guy. Your favourite song at the moment. Oh, that yeah. is my least favourite song. I think it's a bad influence on the children today. But do you know Don't what else? listen to him, he's I'm drunk. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what else is a bad influence on the children today? Drinking at 4.31 in the afternoon? No, it's no. strip clubs. No, these are not, <laughs> none of these things I do. They're making up lies. One thing I did do today was I went to a party, guys. I didn't just go to any party. I went to the internet party. Oh, when you said you would went to a party not like any other party, I thought you meant an S-club party. <laughs> I got excited. Well, it sounds like the worst party of all time, but Kim.com, a.k.a. the villain from the worst James Bond movie of all time, <laughs> launched a, 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 a political party today and its new leader, Lila Hari, and I decided for some bizarre reason to go along. It was weird. We were literally sitting at our computer desk <laughs> and Guy gets up and he goes, Do we have a head cam? We're going to go down to the internet party I, party. No, no, that's not what happened. I go, you does did. any of the people here with a camera, because we have like a film crew here getting ready for Edge TV, uh, do any of you guys want to come and film me at the um, internet party? Yeah. And they all said no, <laughs> but we'll give you this GoPro, and then they duct taped it to my head. <laughs> so I went, and this is weird, because I went into the party awkwardly, because t- it's all professional journalists, all suits there, at the Langham Hotel, all decked out. I turn up with a camera strapped to my head. I sit right at the door. Watch for me on the news tonight because I was right at the door where Kim.com and Honey Hutter wear it and all these professional people walk out and I just look like a big idiot with a camera right on my face. You weren't there for long. Did you get to meet anybody famous or important? I had exclusive interview guys with the star of the party himself, the crappy James Bond villain, Kim.com. Congratulations, Kim. Bloody good launch. Thank you. If there's one thing that I know that young people are into, it's yeah. flowers and balloons. So you oh, nailed it, mate. Thank you. Boy. Well done, and <laughs> thank you. good luck. <laughs> I literally kissed his ass. And uh, it was so funny because the whole time they were trying to go like the internet party. It's representing the young vote because like people like who listen to the edge, like young people often don't vote. They have a low party turnout, so it's yeah. how they're going to get the young, young vote. You turn up to the party, and uh, what do they have? But a whole lot of flowers, some mini quiches, <gasps> and some balloons. And I'm like, they have nailed what young people like absolutely. If they can find out a way for people to vote via Snapchat, they'll win the election. <laughs> do you know you can actually uh, register to vote online now? 
You can, you can. That's register, actually pretty good. You can register to vote online now. Just letting you know if you want to vote uh, in the next election. Uh, yeah, we wish you, everyone should want to because it's compulsory. Uh, elections.govt.nz is the website. Um, so anyway, the political party that um, I wouldn't recommend voting for probably is the Internet Party because they're an absolute shambles. And one of their main members, uh, I think their leader, is the terrifying Honey Hadawera, <laughs> who I met, and he's the scariest man I've ever met. He stared me down when I asked the stupidest question I could possibly ask. <laughs> Hello, it's, it's Guy Williams from Nelson. Can what, you hear me? What's your, what's your favourite website? Yeah. On the internet. Anything that's got good music, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that was bloody good. <laughs> that's bloody good. <laughs> How awkward is that, eh? I literally lost all my courage and all my confidence and just dropped balls. So anyway, the internet party launched. I was there for about half an hour. I can't actually figure out... The connection, because they're saying internet privacy is their big thing because of the GCSB and stuff like that. I can't figure out the connection between privacy and Kim.com's piracy case. (laughs) The only similarity is that the words sound kind of similar, but I hope they can get privacy and piracy sorted out very quickly because I am currently illegally downloading a lot of pornography and I hope that they can... Stop you? Sort out my privacy. No, I need yeah, I need no. my privacy. Can, can you? I am so lost, <laughs> and all I heard in the last twenty seconds was how much porn you download. Uh, I was I was I was trying to make a joke, but I um I failed miserably. It's not a joke if it's true, babe. Guy Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. Um, can you stop doing that? Stop doing what? That. Oh, the shaking thing. Can you, you hear my? That? Can you hear my leg on the bottom of the desk? He seems Guy, ADD. Clint usually has this thing, and he does it all the time. And it's he he has a thing with his leg where he can't sit still, and he'll be sitting next to you. And if you next him on a plane, you have to tell him to stop doing it because yeah. stop doing it. I'll stop it. Sorry. And he'll not even know he's doing it. And he'll just start like banging his leg. And today I was trying to concentrate, and I could hear it out mm. the side of my my ear. Mm. Of that, I heard it out my ear in my ear. Yeah, you've been and listening I, out of your ears lately. And I looked. I was like, "Have you? How many coffees have you had today?" He's like, uh, five. five, five. <laughs> and I was, he goes, "Why, why, why?" And I was like, "Well, because you're not only tapping one foot today; you have both feet going. It's tapering off now, but um, yeah, it's been a rock and rolly morning for me this morning. Because what? What's going on? Did you get a new machine or something? Yeah, I bought one of those George Clooney coffee machines. I bought a Nespresso <laughs> machine. Did um, you? And this morning, because all my flatmates start work at a regular time, not like lazy radio hosts. And so this morning I set it up and um, just just ended up making coffee after coffee. Because Clint- trying, I wanted to try out all the flavours. Spoiler alert, there's only one flavour. They're just in different pods. Clint, how sat for me uh, over Easter when my husband and I were away and... I left him a video on how to use an espresso machine because he hadn't used one before. Very instructional, very helpful. And I ha- we have this like robot cookie jar full of Nespresso pods, and I filled it up before I left, so it was chocker. And I um, came back, husband goes to make a coffee, and he was like, man, they hammered the coffee. There's only four left. And he must have just been like, mm. oh, shivers, this is awesome, and just drunk. Hanks, I don't think this is a good idea for your health. Well, put it this way. I've been very productive this morning, <laughs> um, but I'm imagining maybe about 5.30, the show's going to go downhill when I <laughs> crash into a, into like a crying mess on the ground. You know what that means? That guy and I are going to be out of control from 5.30. <laughs> because we'll get to take over, and it's going to get loose. It's so good, though. Guy, you're missing out on not drinking coffee, and you, Sharon. These machines are incredible. Mm. Chang put me onto it. Chang made me buy this machine. It was on sale, and I, I thank him greatly because he's changed my life. <laughs> Chang's, my ena- Chang's my enabler. <laughs> I, th- I feel like this is the gateway drug to like more strong drug. The next, next, tomorrow you'll come in and go, do you know what I've tried today? Chang's been having me out with ecstasy. And <laughs> the next day you'll be like, do you know what I've tried today? Chang's been helping me out with um, pure methamphetamine. It's going great. I'm really <laughs> fantastic. All the guys, it's much better coffee. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how many coffees is too many, but let's try a few more tomorrow and just see what happens. Guys, Sharon and Clint. <laughs> Let's go into the courtroom, guys. I need the listeners, <laughs> 0800 The Edge or text in the 3343, to help me out with a little bit of a debacle. What happened? The story goes like this. Six months ago, probably a year ago, with an ex, when we're at the end of our relationship, on a bad day, we decided to purchase an animal. What sort of animal? A cat. Was it a relationship-saving cat? No. No. Was it supposed I, to be? <laughs> kind of, yes. <laughs> was, it a, was it a cat-shaped band-aid for your terrible relationship? <laughs> sure. We didn't live together. It was at my flat. It was me who bought the cat. It was my cat. Um, I wanted to call it 
uh, Mr. Kittens. <laughs> she wanted to call it Eugene. We settled on the name Stevens. It was Cat Stevens. It was a classic cat. <laughs> it did help the relationship for about a week. And then things started to go sour. What else I went sour was the, my relationship with the cat. The cat didn't like me, so we moved it to her house, and it became her cat. Okay, so how Although long... Although I still paid for the cat. So how long has the cat been out of your possession? Well, we broke up, and I haven't seen the cat in six months. Do you miss the cat? Not really. I'm going to be honest with you. Not really. <laughs> I love the cat. I think it's great. And- and but you, I don't miss him. And when you broke up, was there any talk about if something happened with yes. the cat? I felt bad. I felt bad about dumping my cat on her. So offered to her and her mum, who she was living with, to take possession back of the cat. Mm-hmm. And they were both happy with them. And I was like, well, I'm happy for that arrangement. For, them to, keep, no- for them to keep the cat. <coughs> for them to they keep said, the cat. no, we'll keep it. Yeah. You go off, be a single man, <laughs> and pet as be many single- other cats as you like. <laughs> Was there any talk ever of if something went wrong and you would have to give money to it, or just it's your cat? No, 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 no. You've just, you've just, um, you've just uh, teased what happened, as people predictably can see what um, happened. Oh, spoiler alert! What the happens? cat has teeth problems, and when a cat has teeth problems because it's not brushing its teeth or flossing, mm. you get into big trouble. The bill is fifteen hundred dollars. Has it got some cat vitis? My ex girlfriend is coming to me and that. saying. Half of this is yours. What? Four, ha, what? Fourteen hundred dollars. So I've got to pay. Game. I've got to pay. I've got to pay um, seven or eight hundred dollars towards the cat's dental bills. A cat that I bought and is outright was mine, but has since been passed on to her. Nah, that's not right. You do, you don't owe anything to that. It's not your cat, and you haven't you. you haven't been around that cat for a long time. You offered. It's her cat. Her problem. I kind of think it's like a child. <laughs> If you guys had a child together yeah, and you broke yeah. up and we it lived with, and it lived in Australia with the mum <laughs> for some reason, if something went wrong, you'd have to pay for the child. No. And, and I'm sure on the ownership papers when you got the cat that it would be your name. Let's settle this. Judge Judy Styles, call out 0800 The Edge or text into 3343. Do I pay the money or don't I pay the money? Annie. Sorry. Hello. This is so Annie, dramatic. what do you think? <laughs> uh, I don't think he should have to pay any money. Yeah, exactly. Because if it was a washing machine and her washing machine broke down, he would not have to pay for a new washing machine. Exactly, because she broke the washing machine. Why does he have to pay for the cat to be fixed when it's her cat now? But it's a living thing. And he, he said when he gave it to him, you know, you guys can have the cat, but it is still his cat as well. To complicate the situation... My ex-girlfriend and I haven't been on great terms, and I do see this as an opportunity to buy my way back into <laughs> being her mate. I think that you should have to pay, because so, you guys got it together. This is horrible, but it did run through my mind. Someone texted in saying, find out how much it is to euthanize the cat, <gasps> and then pay half. <laughs> it does work. No, but when it gets to 1500 it's so much money that you do you do start considering these things. No, you don't. No, you do, really. You do. You do. I spent $1,500 on my dog to get an operation to improve its life. Yeah, but your dog is, like, is like a child. Is the best. This cat was a moggy from the SPCA that we rescued for $50. Let's take some calls on the issue. What do you think, Shelley? Should Guy have to pay up, or is it the girlfriend's responsibility? Nah, definitely the girlfriend's responsibility. Yes! She's taken, yeah. she's taken ownership of, of the cat. But therefore, um, any bills associated are her responsibilities. Especially dental bills, right, Shelley? Because Guy isn't the one that's been there feeding it cat candy the whole time <laughs> and letting it go to bed without brushing its cat teeth, <laughs> right? Most definitely. And, you know, the old saying, possession is nine-tenths of the law. Yeah. She, and she, y- she has the possession of the cat. And the other saying, your cat now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who could forget but that classic meow. saying? <laughs> <laughs> meow. On 100 The Edge, Jared, what do you think? Uh, I think that uh, she should be paying the bill because it'd be if, if you sold the cat to someone, it'd be like them trying to come back to you and say, hey, it was your cat, you should pay for her. <laughs> the cat, if the cat was for sale, I think it would be as is, where is, though. But he, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sell the cat. He they decided when they broke up that she got the cat because the cat didn't like guy. So if if she got say the car like the car in a relationship, yeah, would she have to pay 
I'd have to pay for half the car if it broke down. Exactly. Yeah, but that's it could not... be a car, a washing machine, a cat. That's not a living exactly. thing, though. It's not a living thing that you guys care yeah, but, about together. But, but you, do, you do sell living things like the cats. Oh, I feel sorry for the poor wee cat. He does, he's just trying to get guys' attention, but abandoning him. <laughs> and Dane, what do you think about the whole messy situation? Well, I'm on Guy's side, and Guy, you've got to stop and think, do you want to spend $750 on a six pussy, or do you want to spend $750 on stripper cash? Some real good stuff. <laughs> good call. Well, if you put it to him like that, he's already going to go buy a voucher from Calendar Girls. I think at the end <laughs> of this discussion, and the jury have spoken unanimously. It's been a good discussion. We have had not one person in support of you paying up for the cat. So, Guy. Apart from me. Oh, apart from Sharon, sorry. I've heard that, a couple of texts, but it's been, it's been overwhelming in that favour. Yeah, so, I, good news, you don't have to pay for the cat guy. I've I, I've got a bombshell to drop. Um, I handed over $700 last night. Oh, you're pathetic. So I guess we're going to ask the new um, the new question, 100 The Edge. Can I awkwardly go and ask for my money back? <laughs> text into 3343. This Next. is terrible. 24 Next. minutes of my life, I'm never going to get back. Guy, Sharon. And Clint on the edge. The edge. Guy Sharon and Clint. That Z, it's clarity. Are you shushing Chang? Yeah, she's talking when you were saying the song. It's called, it's called, it's called having a conversation, Chang. Maybe yeah. you should try it sometime. <laughs> We've got social lives that we need to plan <laughs> after the show. We've got a problem here at the edge. We've got a few problems. <laughs> We've got many problems. We and have the, a wall to that office for the start. <laughs> That's the big problem. People got, listening do not want to hear about our first wheel problem. Yeah, I've got asbestos in my lungs. They have prob- oh, but we maybe... Too, you've gone too far there, Guy Williams. We've got an actual problem Why in our office. Why has he gone too far, the- <laughs> Chang's trying to get out of this. Chang is in the, in the room here for a reason right now, guys. <laughs> the, prob- the problem that we have at the edge... The problem that we have, <clears throat> and we shouldn't laugh because this is a serious problem. Very serious. We have. <laughs> <laughs> we have. And we <laughs> have. Hang on, compose yourself because this is a real issue. We have a butt toucher. Oh, no. <sighs> and it's Chang. What? Chang has been. On a daily basis, inappropriate with the women in this workplace. That's BS. And touching their <laughs> bottoms. He's a butt toucher. Chang. Not just the woman, he touched my bottom once. It was, it was quite, it was, I was weirdly into it. Wh- whatever. Chang, you have been labelled by several people in the building. Like who? As the office butt toucher. Well, no, 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 no. This is not, this is not a name and shame, Chang. The victims of your butt touching shouldn't have to come forth and defend themselves. Steph, uh, Steph from the night show has just walked in. Just a one word answer. Steph, have you been a victim of the butt toucher? Affirmative. Oh. <laughs> what else was this? How often was this? are you being approached by the butt toucher? Um, it's been a couple of times in the last few months, I'm going to say. I and can't is even it remember a it. slap or a grope? It's definitely a massive slap. Chang, what do you have to say Thank for yourself? Thank you, Stephanie. I cannot remember. I must have been really drunk. Ignorance is no defence. Yeah, don't... drunkenness is not a defence. You don't even drink, though. You're missing that enzyme that some Asian people have and they can't drink. <laughs> I have no idea. Chang, I, Chang I don't, don't play, don't don't play got, ignorance. We, it goes actually, deeper than this. We've compiled some victim impact statements as we, well. We have got someone from the office who is prepared to go on record and testify against you as the butt toucher. I just got an email before we get to that from Kath, who is one of our sales people who lives in a totally different part of the building. She, she said, lives there. Does she live here? Well, <laughs> she may as well. She said... Chang has grabbed my butt when I was grabbed my butt when I was at your work last week. Your butt toucher. I was going to say she was asking for it, but I'm not going to say. Chang. <laughs> oh my god. We're, we're, we're on a we're on a fine line here, guys. We're this, on a fine line. This here is a statement from someone who is so upset about the butt toucher they weren't prepared to come and give their name, but this That's is yes. their testimony. So nobody's going to know this is me, right? Because I just really, really don't want to make this awkward. Yep, it's all good. The uh, voice changer is on. Okay. 
every day when I come to work, I'm being subjected to butt touches from Chang Hung. I'll be sitting at my desk, and if I say something smart to him, he stands up, pushes me to the left, and then slaps my bum really, really hard. And I even had a mark there for 25 minutes the other day. It was so sore. But literally every time I walk past him, he always slaps my butt. And he even did a lingering touch the other day. And it's... I don't even have an amazing butt. I don't get why he's doing it, but he's butt touched me eight times today. It's just really uncomfortable. <sighs> That'll do, eh? No, oh, thank God for voice disguise because I just couldn't ever tell him. <laughs> um, I turned the voice disguise off there at the end. <laughs> the butt toucher. That's such BS, Sharon. BS. I, I it's think not. And you know what? You today. That was that was done a few days ago. Today you have touched my butt. Nine times. That's all right. I told the boss, you know what the boss said? What? Well, Sharon, that's your fault for being too boo delicious at work. <laughs> so bend over, you're getting nine. Oh, hello. You bend over. <laughs> okay, all okay. right. This is weird. Ow, ow, ow. Lower, lower, ow, ow, lower, lower, lower. Okay, now too low now. This is the weirdest dispute resolution of all time. <laughs> you're very fit- Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Edge. We've got our friend Megan on 0800 The Edge right now. Megan, your eyes yeah. are a little bit offended right now. <laughs> you've just you've just seen something that you can't unsee. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so this morning at work, I was drinking my morning tea, and I got past the latest Metro magazine, and um, yeah, basically spat out what was in my mouth for tea because I saw the cover. The cover being a picture of of Guy Williams. Um, sitting on a chair, nude, with like a scuba tank. <laughs> <laughs> and did you go and did you read the oh. actual article in the Metro magazine, Megan? No, I kind of like shrieked through the magazine down, and it's still sitting on the floor. If you <laughs> if you actually open it, you'll see a picture of him not just nude, but with um, a, a fish down his speedos. Oh, great! Yeah, I'll look forward to that tomorrow. <laughs> all I'm all I'm saying, if anyone's ever wanted to know if. Guy was packing hate or not, just buy Metro magazine. There's a real good close up in there. No! <laughs> if you, if you want to know if Guy's packing fish as well, the spoiler alert, he is. What did you think when you saw it, Megan? Give Guy a rating, some feedback. Oh, a little bit of muscle tone might be a little bit nice, but aside from that, you know, maybe four and a half out of ten. <laughs> It's not four bad. Four and a half out of four two. Four and a half. It's, oh, four and a half. A little, bit, a little bit pasty, too. <laughs> Got to get a bit of sun on you. So a ten and some push-ups, maybe a few squats might help. Yeah, raise them a few points. <laughs> if you want to see this, it is on the cover of Metro magazine. Can you buy Metro outside of Auckland anywhere? I'm just glad you, you didn't say yeah. shave the pubes, that's all I can say. <laughs> Dodge the bullet there, guys. Guy Williams, <laughs> our very own cover girl. Guy, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Here you go, that's the podcast. Thank you. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sharon, but yes. did you just say before that the Broods homecoming gig that Guy is going down to champion and celebrate and lead the parade of yeah. is now sold out? You told me to correct you if you were wrong. Ah. So I don't have anything to say. <laughs> you're right. That was a, I thought you were having a stroke. That was a, no, I thought I was in trouble. You know when girls don't say anything and I'm like, oh, The best part, treatment. you should have seen Clint's face. Because his face just, he looked like he was going to punch me. But I was just no, trying. No, I was terrified. I was just trying to have a laugh. Did everyone have a laugh? I had a laugh. I had a laugh. I and didn't. that's what it's all about, isn't it, at the end of the day. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We appreciate it. And as always... Thank you for the music. Never. The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast.